So let's take a look at our concept generation process. And you might think that a process for brainstorming may be a little restrictive, but we're going to use a process for some reasons. We have reasons why we want to do this. And it's usually this process is inexpensive because it's just some time that it takes, maybe a few supplies, but it's usually not uh, too expensive. So but it'll help save our, our team from a few drawbacks. Uh, we want to make sure we're considering a lot of ideas. If, if we don't use a process, we might only consider a few ideas. We want to make sure that we've looked at what else is out there. Uh, if we don't do that, uh, we may lose some ideas that might be helpful. And we want to make sure that we're involving more than just a few people in the process. So with more people involved, we'll get more ideas. So an example of a process that we're going to use, we're going to talk about clarifying the problem, searching externally for ideas, searching internally for ideas, and exploring all those ideas systematically, and then reflecting on the, the process in the end. So, in order to clarify our problem, we have to make sure we understand what are the functions that our design needs to do. So one way to do that is to con conduct a functional decomposition. Um, that's where we look at our overall design goals, and we break it down into steps or functions or individual systems that we have to design. And then we kind of draw that out just as in a black box form. For example, this is an example of our toothbrush in a black box form. Then we have a couple inputs on the left here, we have an output on the right, and we have some systems in between that need to occur, or some functions. So for example, uh, we have to put some energy into our toothbrush, we have to trigger it in some way, and then we have to have it apply to our teeth. So the energy has to be stored, that has to be part of the function of our design, it has to store the energy, and then it has to convert that energy into some type of motion that's going to be applied to our teeth. The trigger has to be able to measure that the user wants it to be turned on, and then it has to be able to release the energy and cause the motion to start and stop also. And then that motion has to be applied to our teeth in order to clean them. So those are some basic functions, we're not looking at ideas on how to achieve those functions, we're just trying to make sure we understand all the steps that need to occur in order to make our design work. Another uh, way we can write down some ideas is through a concept functional decomposition. So let's say we just want to focus on one of those um, individual steps in there, like maybe making the head of the toothbrush move. And you can make the head move in different ways. One is to directly drive the motion. Another one is to cause a vibration to occur. And there's different ways that we can achieve both of those, those functions. So we can cause rotational motion to occur. We can do a side to side motion or an in and out motion. Uh, there's different motions we can combine together also. Uh, the, ex the eccentric weight uh, can cause a motion also where you just have a motor spinning that has a weight on it and it causes a vibration to occur um, that could be located in the neck or in the body of the toothbrush. Those are some examples. There are probably other ways you can cause head motion also. But that's uh, some examples of how we can try to identify what functions can occur and then we come up with ideas on how to make that occur. So uh, the next step would be to search externally. And this is looking at what is out there already that's related to our design. So we can interview people that already use that product to see if they have ideas. We can consult experts in the field that maybe have uh, designed these products for a long time already. We can look through patents, uh, through the patent office that's uh, available online. And we can, now patents are uh, protected for a certain period of time, but after that time you can use those ideas freely or you can pay royalties to, to use current patents. And then we can also look through published literature. There's different journals and conference proceedings, um, trade magazines, uh, and different handbooks available out there. Um, people that do research in areas or come up with new ideas, a lot of times publish them in order to get um, their ideas out there. So a lot of times they'll be published in journals uh, or conferences where they go and talk to other people in that field and present their ideas. Uh, trade magazines like ASME or IEEE and other organizations that deal with engineering, um, different functions of engineering, they put out magazines periodically and there's ideas that come in those. Uh, 
You can also benchmark related products. So we've been doing, we'll be doing that in class a little bit and um, looking at other products out there to see what they do and, and try to incorporate maybe some of their ideas uh, and try to make yours better. Then you can start searching internally inside your group. And this is kind of the brainstorming sessions that you're going to be looking at to come up with ideas in order to achieve our, all those individual functions that we were looking at. So we can, one some rules that are helpful for when you're doing a brainstorming session is a lot of times you might send your group out, have them all come up with ideas first, and then bring those ideas to, a, to the group and share them all together. A lot of times you can get a lot of different ideas that way than when you just do the, sort of the brainstorming session within your group where you might only follow one path as a group. So uh, we want to make sure that everyone has an opportunity to express their ideas and that everyone listens to them. Those are just some general rules about brainstorming. We don't want to make judgments at this point. We don't want to be critical of people's ideas in order to allow them to come up with new, more ideas. If you start making judgments, people stop putting out ideas. Uh, we want to try to get as many ideas as possible. Even if they seem unfeasible, uh, we want them put out there just because you may think it's a, not a good idea at first or it's not going to be impossible. Uh, but then if you change the idea a little bit, someone else might have a, a way to change that idea and make it into a very good idea. So we want to make sure that we can build off those ideas from each other. So even bad ideas sometimes are helpful. Some tips to help in brainstorming is to make sure that your group is diverse in its background and its experiences. That way people can come up with different ideas from their own perspectives. We want to make sure that the environment that your group is in is creative and people are able to put out ideas without being judged. Um, there could be exercises or creative activities to do to try to get people thinking of different ways to uh, achieve f functions and different ideas. So uh, we want to make sure that we're in a creative environment. You might want to have a facilitator that can come in and, and be able to make sure that everyone's being heard, putting ideas down, and um, organizing them in some fashion. And maybe there you have a recorder or some type of recording device in order to make sure all these ideas are captured. Um, when the process slows down, you may want to take some activities uh, maybe pretend you're using the device. Um, maybe that helps you come up with new ideas too. So make sure that when things slow down that you try to keep it going. So, and we want to make sure we can use um, shared space in order to get ideas and see other people's ideas. It could be in the, in the brainstorming session. It could be some virtual space that you're recording ideas in. Uh, an example um, of, a, of some creative spaces is shown here. There's an example of uh, people looking at a board where all their ideas are written down on, their, on the board. Um, the other picture has a facilitator who's trying to get ideas from people and, and again putting them on a, on a board. So some examples of that. Then we want to be able to explore all these options that we have and try to look at how we can piece everything together in order to achieve our overall goal. We can do this in a couple different ways. One option is to look at a lot of different combinations of ideas to achieve the different functions in order to get an overall solution and looking at different possible overall solutions. Or you can look at sub-functions and look at solutions to sub-functions and then piece them together different ways. And we can uh, do that. Sometimes it's helpful to, to graphically show those so through maybe a, a concept classification tree or a concept combination table. I'll show you an example of the tables we'll be using these. Um, we'll look at the top one as our example. So we have this is for a an automatic coffee maker um, where it grinds the coffee and makes makes it all, all together. So we have different functions. So there's one function on heating water across the top here, and then we have another function on grinding the coffee, and a third function of mixing the water and the coffee together. There's probably more functions than that that have to occur, but those are a couple simple functions along the way, They're kind of the main things. Then we have different ideas. There could be more than this also, but here's a list of ideas for heating water. You could be looking at uh, resistance heating, microwave heating, induction heating. Those are all possible ways to heat water. Different ways to grind coffee. You can smash the coffee. 
you can have blades that are going to cut the coffee or you can grind the coffee in some way. And there's probably more ideas than that too. And then there's different ways to mix the coffee and the water together. Uh, most coffee makers are a drip one or um, where the pressure is, the water pressure is forced into the coffee grounds. And then what you do is that you look at, take one um, idea from each column and piece them together to get an overall design. And you can come up with a different combination, that's the, the lower one, to get an o a different overall design. And then we can try to make a judgment on which of those overall designs are, are better. That will be on our concept selection stage. This is also called a morph chart or a morphological chart. That's another name for it. And then at the end, we can go through and reflect on the process, make sure that we've explored all the possible ideas, make sure that we've looked through a lot of external sources to get ideas of even things that aren't even related but maybe serve a similar function. Uh, and then we can make sure that we've made, made uh, everyone allowed to have their ideas shared in the group. And once we go through that process, we can move on and start selecting our concepts. So that's an overview of the concept generation process.